You never know where an emergency vehicle is headed. Heart attacks, strokes, shortness of breath. Working fires, biohazard contamination, search and rescue. Robberies in progress, shootings, car accidents. Oftentimes, drivers are unsure what to do as emergency vehicles approach. When you see and hear sirens and lights, safely pull over to the right and stop. By doing so, this will allow emergency vehicles to safely pass and continue to their emergency. Driver safety is a responsibility for everyone. Not following the driver safety law for emergency vehicles puts everyone at risk. From emergency personnel, civilian drivers, and people who are waiting help. Not only is driver safety the safe thing to do, it's the law. This can carry points on your license and a fine. So let's be safe. Remember, sirens and lights move to the right. Hello, my name is Aaron Porter and welcome to TV20 Hot Topics. And today, as we speak, the Civil Service Commission for the City of Cleveland will begin accepting applications for the classification of firefighter. And right now, represented here today are two of our finest firemen and also one of our EMS uh, females here, Christina. Thanks for joining us here on TV20. Tell us real quick, everyone here took a different journey to uh, where they are right now. And as part of that uh, elite force that helps us uh, stay safe around the city of Cleveland. And Christina, yours is intriguing. You went from 10 years ago to a stay-at-home mom, to landscaping, to now serving our city and our population. Tell us what uh, put you on that path. Um, I always wanted to be a firefighter and a paramedic. So I just followed my dreams and took a test and here I am. It's a lot more exciting than Pampers and <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot more exciting. I like to help people and I strive to do the right thing. Now, you, you're, you're a mom yes. of two, and, and when you make that decision, I'm sure that's a family decision. And that's a, there's some concern anytime uh, in, in your field when you leave the house, you hope that, of course, you, you want your family to come back uh, and as safe returns. How do you um, get through that through, throughout the day? Um, just following what I'm supposed to do and believe in God. And, do the right thing, basically. Now take us through the, the people across the street right now are filling out their uh, applications for their exam. You went through that process. What was that process like from signing up to testing to your eventual training? Um, the process for taking the test. Yes, and they got you to that badge right there. Um, it, there's an interview process. Mm -hmm. For EMS, it's a little bit different right. than fire. Um, and. Basically, it's just an interview process and uh, experience and going through school, becoming an EMT first, and then the application process, basically. Now, when you get the training, I'm sure as when I watch television and I'm seeing people training and being EMS and fire, they're jumping over logs and obstacle courses and all that kind of stuff, carrying bodies up ladders. Did you have to go through all that? I did. At EMS, um, the integration between fire and EMS are, is happening right now, so they chose a select few to be cross-trained as firefighters. I was one of them, and I went through the same fire academy as these two gentlemen here, went, went with him as well, and that is what we do. We ladders, um, we have 185-pound dummies that we have to carry, um, lots of chopping wood and yeah. running and running stairs and lots of training with live fire and going into fires. Now going into to fire, of course, it's a male-dominated field. How were you accepted? Um, in Cleveland, I was accepted 100%. That's because you beat Dawson in every category. Correct? Actually, it is. That's <laughs> why. <Absolutely>. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, Dawson, <laughs> man, Dawson also joins us here by way of Akron, Ohio. You grew up in Akron, moved to Cleveland, right. and you are now 36 years old. Yes. And you got into the uh, fire department just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> Tell us about your uh, process. Uh, well, uh, like, uh, like you mentioned, I grew up in Akron um, and I got exposed to the fire service through my father. He's a fireman in the city of Akron. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, as well as my grandfather, he worked in the fire service. And so I was exposed that way and I saw the job through them. And, uh, and it, it, was, it was amazing to me, mm -hmm. you know. And um, a lot of young children, you know, 
like the notion of being in a fireman, but I had the opportunity to see it firsthand. And I made up in my mind when I was a young man that that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I took the long way around the block to get there. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, I, well, I'm 36 years old, so I just got in the nick of time. But uh, prior to joining the fire service, I worked as an attorney. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was encouraged by both my parents to go to school, complete my you know education in college. And so I took that path and I realized that I wasn't as fulfilled as I thought I would be, you know, as a lawyer, and my desire to become a fireman never went away. Right. So uh, I said, you know, when is Cleveland going to get this test? <laughs> <laughs> and eventually right. they announced it, and uh, I signed up and, uh, and uh, went through a lot of, uh, you know, pre preparation and, and physical training, and fortunately I, I uh, got the job, so, and I've never been happier. Did you give the lawyer thing a chance? I did. I 20 did. years of school and you went to be a fireman. Oh, exactly. Right. Yeah. We appreciate it. I, I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> yep. And we could go over here to my man Gerardo Colon. Yes. How are you doing today? Doing well, yes, sir. All right. And you also, uh, you're from the east side of Cleveland. Yes, sir. And grew up here, born and raised. And tell us about how you decided to become a fireman. Well, pretty much all my life, I've been in, instilled with the, uh, the capabilities of helping others. Right. I was a lifeguard. I worked in guest relations at hotels. And also my parents are pretty active in uh, helping others. Mm -hmm. So it was a no-brainer when the test came. I took the advantage of it. So. And, and, and we appreciate it. I want to get, get down to it. This is a difficult field that you all are in. And what does it take every day to deal with some of the things you see? I'm sure you see tragedy every day. How do you, can I go with you, Dawson? How do you deal with that every day? Uh, you deal with it knowing that, you know, you're doing the best you can to help people, first of all. I mean, you know, uh, you understand coming into the job that you're going to see and experience things that, you know, people are having some of the worst days and experiences of their life. So you know that coming into it. But uh, the other aspect is you're working with others in that team environment. You can, you know, get the support of your, your, your colleagues and, 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 and essentially a second family in mm -hmm. the firehouse, you know. Uh, that really, you know, goes a long way in helping you get through and cope with some of the things you see. Right. You know. And Christina, you've been a, a mom of two mm -hmm. also. Tell us the same thing. How do you deal with that? Just exactly what he pointed out. It's trusting um, your training and trusting the partners and the people you work with. And that's how you get through all that. Um, he, he's right about even with EMS and going into firehouses and you're working together. All of us are working together and it's all like a big family. Now, real quick, what makes, I'm sure you guys are part of the team, this, this Cleveland uh, uh, safety team, and you're competing, of course, against everyone around you. What makes our units better than people outside of the city of Cleveland? What makes our unit better than those Akron guys that your, 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 <laughs> that your father and everyone work for? I mean, I, I don't know if I would you know, characterize it that way. I, I consider all people that work in public safety a part of like the same team. But what makes Cleveland unique, I think, is that you have a diversity of people here that you're, you're serving. I mean, I mean, it, it's a, it's you, there's various pop, you know, different types of populations and neighborhoods and experiences. And uh, uh, I mean, for me, that that's what excites me about Cleveland. You know, I, I'm, I'm relatively new to this right. job and. You know, as a as a new person on this job, I have the opportunity to be what they call detailed, meaning I can be sent to different firehouses uh, across the city. And I could be in Glenville one day, I can be in Slavic Village the next day, I can be in Ohio City my next shift. I mean, and it's a different experience every time, right. you know. So I think that's what's exciting about Cleveland. Now you go through, uh, how long was training? How long was training for you? Mine, mine was a little bit different. Uh, because I just went through the fire training. Right. Was, you, you started off with EMS and then you uh, were cross-trained as in the fire, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then also, this is the one I ask everyone, including you, let me, let me go over here and ask Gerardo real quick. When your first time, you, you went through all the training, got all out the, out the way, you get your badge, you're ready to go, the first time that bell goes off, the first time responding, what does that feel like? It's pretty nerve-wracking. To be honest, <laughs> what did you but, go through that day? Do, can well, you remember that? The first call, I believe, was a dumpster fire, really. and a dumpster fire pretty much isn't that dangerous or anything uh, alarming to other firefighters. Right. But I was scrambling to, to put my uniform day. on. Yeah, for <laughs> right. me, it was the end of the world. <laughs> 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 but it pretty much was uh, a good experience because I saw how uh, the coworkers that I had carried themselves before, during, and after an incident. 
and uh, from that point on, I try to tone it down right. and pretty much relax when it came to uh, any type of incident that you might come upon. Mm -hmm. uh, every incident is different. Um, you kind of know ahead of time what you might encounter, but even then, some things may change at the last minute. So Now, now already a, a hero being a fireman, and you also represent the Latino community that is huge here in Cleveland. How are you revered there in the Latino community being a um, fireman? I try to help out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that many uh, Latinos in the fire department, but the city of Cleveland has a large population of Hispanics, and we try to go out into the community, the small numbers that we have, and encourage others to participate in community efforts to make the city safer. Um, I believe there's only 50, roughly, Hispanics on right. the department. Mm -hmm. And I think to represent the city uh, in a proper way, we should try to increase the diversity across the board. So that's our effort, and so far, so good. And the city of Cleveland efforts are, are going definitely noticed. We have females, African American, uh, Latino community, everybody represented and helping keep our uh, city safe. Take me through a, a typical work day when you're not fighting fires. What else is going on in the firehouse? Well, we, sh we do a roll call a shift. Uh, right when you show up to work, uh, you will talk to your coworkers about the past uh, shift and any information that is necessary to pass on, whether the vehicle needs maintenance, uh, whether something's going on in the neighborhood that needs to be noticed. Um, it takes roughly about five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, let's say Dawson would be the driver for the, for the day, mm -hmm. for example and uh, Ms. Schneider could be the, the lieutenant for the day. Mm -hmm. Dawson would go ahead and take care of the apparatus, check out everything that needs to be checked out, while Lieutenant Schneider will go ahead and deal with uh, the paperwork and see what logistically needs to be done for the day. Sometimes there's, uh, there's fire hydrants that need to be checked. Mm -hmm. There's always t some type of inspections within the area, and after that, uh, the lieutenant would come, or the captain would come and speak to the rest of the members and relay to us what we need to do for the day. Throughout the rest of the day, pretty much you're on call there for 24 hours. And in those 24 hours, you may encounter a lot of uh, incidents or you may not, but you're always on call. Um, I'm pretty sure people have seen us at the grocery store shopping yeah. and they believe that we eat well, <laughs> but we, we pay for our own meals right. and we try to feed ourselves very well. So you know, and your, your, your work hours are, are, are kind of different. Like you're, you're working four days on or three days off how does it work for you it's uh in the city of cleveland it's a 24-hour uh shift right. and we have uh two full days off in between each shift so it's a 24-hour on 48 hours off mm -hmm. uh rotation and uh it's it, it's an adjustment uh, but it, it's also i think a positive thing i mean if my <laughs> using myself as an example um, I, you know, worked last night and, you know, you never know what you're going to encounter now in 24 hours. Days. Let's go kick it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's exactly where I'm going with it All is right. that you need some of that time to recover right. in between shifts. I, I worked last night and we, you know, had, you know, six or seven runs after midnight, right. you know, I'm, I'm, almost every hour we were out and, uh, you you need to recover. Yeah. You know, I honestly, to be, you know, just woke up from a nap a few <laughs> before I came here. So. <laughs> Uh, but so that two, those two days are, I think, are very beneficial to recover so you can be ready to do your job again when you're assigned to report to work again. So those alarms are going off constantly. You're constantly on call. You're not just sitting around pretty much. No, like like, like uh, Geraldo said, I mean, you never know what you're going to have. Right. I mean, there are going to be days where, you know, you're just constantly running. It right. could be emergency medical calls where we're assisting EMS. It could be fires. It could be uh, car accidents. You never know. And then there are other days where, you know, they're, they're kind of slow, but you never know what you're going to have, you know. Right. Now, Christina, you can take me back to your first time that that alarm went off and you had to respond. Um, like I said, it's a little bit different because I'm basically sitting here as kind of the future right. of EMS because I was at EMS and fire because I was cross trained. So I have not yet responded to a emergency fire call right. in this city. Um, but our alarms, as far as EMS goes off, nonstop around the clock, right. every probably five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but remember? that first call, yes, it, it's it's nerve wracking. It's scary. Mm -hmm. You're thinking in your head. Remember what to do. You know, when you get there, and with all the training you have, it just clicks, and you know what to do. And you look to your partner, and you look to the people you work with, and it goes smooth. But everyone's nervous the first time. Right. One hundred percent. If I could interject, I mean, we do see EMS actually quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, and they do respond to fire calls in some respects. I mean, if we have a house fire or a building that's reported on fire, mm -hmm. EMS is coming there as mm -hmm. well. You know, so while you know fire, of course, is going to be dispatched to a, uh, you know, fire apparatus will be dispatched to a fire. Uh, our EMS personnel will also be dispatched to that scene uh, in, the, in the event that there's someone hurt or injured or sick, you know, so. So right now we talked about earlier about a merger between the EMS and the fire department, and that's happening right now. Can you want to explain that a little bit more to our listening audience? Yes, just, just an integration process that's been going on for mm -hmm. fire and EMS, and they just are, um, have chose select few from EMS to be cross-trained, which, which I was last summer, and there's currently three cross-training now in the fire academy that's going on currently. All right. Is that something that you think is needed? Absolutely needed here? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. I think it's a great thing. All right, now, um, your downtime. Now, when you're not fighting fires and you're yet, you're in the, the uh, firehouse with all the guys, what, what, what are you guys doing? What goes on? There are a lot of uh, video games, uh, what's happening there? Well, to piggyback off of Geraldo, after, <laughs> after roll call and you, <laughs> and you are, uh, you know, checking out the apparatus and equipment afterwards, I mean, we, we do live there for 24 hours. Right. So, and you have some cases four to maybe eight or nine people living in this, in quarters, you got to clean it up, right. you know? So we have housework. I mean, you know, someone is assigned to clean the kitchen. Someone else is assigned to clean the bathroom or, and, and other areas of the apparatus uh, 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 quarters. And so we spend the morning making sure everything is clean and, and kept. Uh, someone is, is uh, like he mentioned, shopping so that we can eat, right. you know. Uh, and then um, at other times, you know, during the day, where the, you know, we could be, like you said, checking hydrants to make sure that they're operational, uh, assisting uh, with uh, installing uh, smoke detectors in right. the community. You know, so I mean, there's a, you know, there are moments where you're down, but it, it's, it's not like we're just sitting around all day. You know, it's, that makes for a long day for us. <laughs> right. So we try to keep, you know, as busy and productive as, as we can. Now, Geraldo, you being uh, Spanish speaking, yes, sir. right? See. In see, all right. See. <laughs> that help you, did that help you a lot? Does it help your department? Has it helped you uh, through some situations where they were lucky to have you there because you were able to communicate? It actually has. Um, there, for the majority of the time of my career, as I've been on for 14 years coming up in October, I've been on the east side of Cleveland, which actually has some Hispanics on the east side as well, which I'm from the east side. Um, but there's other times where I was uh, detailed to west side communities, and while working there, we caught alarms or incidents where they needed someone speak, speak in Spanish or another language in general, and it helped out a lot because when dealing with somebody that has a medical concern, one little mistake can be costly, right. and uh, it helps out a lot. Just now, now, now every year they have this uh, football game that goes on between the fire department and the police, right? right? Are you all you, you involved in that? You try to get on that team and play a little bit? No, I try. To, I play basketball. They have that too. They, they, we have one coming department? up this year. That's, that, that, that's a big rivalry, isn't it, between the fire department and police department? Friendly rivalry. Friendly rivalry. Yeah. Right. Now, are they on your side, EMS? They are now. <laughs> <laughs> they are now, right? That's good. So, yes. so <laughs> the city of Cleveland and, and our um, Honorable Mayor Frank Jackson always looking for people just like yourselves to, to join and, and be of service to our community through our safety departments. And right now, like I said, people are signing up um, June 2nd through the 12th, actually right over here at the Cleveland Public Auditorium from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on June 7th from 9 a.m to 3 p.m. applications will also be accepted at the following recreation centers. You have the Gunning Recreation Center on Tuesday, June 3rd, um, and that's 16700 Puritus Avenue. Thursday, June 5th, Zelma George Recreation Center. Tuesday, June 10th at Easterbrook Recreation Center, that's 4129 Fulton Road. Then Wednesday, June 11th, that's John F. Kennedy Rec Center. So we're looking for more good men and women. <laughs> All right, so please take your time if you want to uh, inquire about our safety forces, our fire department, EMS, and go down, get your application and sign up. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm Errol Porter. It's been TV20 Hot Topics.